get on food stamps because that shit is there's weird. absolutely no reason my tax dollars are paying for you to get on food stamps yeah that, that i if i could do it again because i would have eaten so much better like i mean i i wasn't i was a vegetarian and i was so like i was like thin anyway i was eating just like bags of spinach but like you know, Isn't it I like could, kind of a, a process to get on food stamps or to get any of that stuff from the government, though? Not when you're a college student. Okay. They, it's, like easy. Um, it's so much easier. Yeah. Cause like it's like in like the bylaws, it's kind of like it's about income. And then, and like college students are just like not capable of affording shit. So it's easy to get it. It would be so base to take a girl to a grocery store on the first date and like <laughs> buy all of your food and food stamps and then like take her on a picnic, dude. That would be so awesome. That's so lit, dude. You it's can so get funny. so much good food. You can get, you can get like- so much. Yeah, you can get as long as it's not. Um, It applies to basically any raw ingredient and like even applies to beyond that because I know – um. I've seen could, people buying like Mountain Dew and shit with it, right? Yeah, yeah. They, 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 they added soda. It, that wasn't the case before. I think that was also Obama. Um, That's really weird. Like, what? yeah, yeah. They added a bunch of like random shit to it that like un- is unnecessary, but it should just be for real food. But I think people like you know the the leftist protesters were like, no, there's no, no, no. it's whatever, Some idiots. I don't know. Uh, the the other big point that they always had was like, oh, well, the reason that I'm fat is because I don't have time. Like the raw ingredients may be cheaper, but I don't have the time. And like, do they just not have crock pots? Did they not know about like rice cookers? Is it like you literally can just toss random shit in a crock pot and it will taste delicious? That's and true. Yeah. People also, also, some people also have weird things about germs and they feel like cooking things is like unclean or something like that. And like the fruit has to come like cut up in a plastic box or else it's not clean. That's really weird. Yeah, there is actually – no, that is definitely a thing, especially like in poor neighborhoods. I don't know what the deal with that is. It's weird. But yeah, I do hear that sometimes. Uh, yeah, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's like they get like the misinformation. Like you see like the salmonella poisoning from like mm-hmm. eating lettuce and then it's like, okay, I can only eat – prepackaged stuff because it's like they feel no like restaurants are cleaner than something that you would make at home yeah, i have a very is, i actually know a guy who's like extremely overweight and he i like made something one time and he wouldn't eat it and like everyone was eating it and he wouldn't eat it because he wanted to eat out because it was like he has like a weird thing about cleanliness oh yeah that's true also like in like poor neighborhoods a lot of times like you go to people's houses and they're gross and they're just like disgu- and they're like this place is absolutely fucking disgusting. I would never eat. And then you like and they make you food, and you're just like, I don't want to eat whatever you make because I know it's like contaminated. This has literally never happened to me because I'm the world's most uh, disgusting human being. <laughs> no, the only reason I even like uh, so I didn't really experience this until my parents got divorced. So they were both broke for a while. So like I was in like a normal middle class neighborhood, and then literally the Jewish neighborhood, and then they broke up. And then so for like a few years while they were both like figuring out the divorce and they were like dirt poor, I was in like the hood hood, which is where any and all of my street credit comes from. And uh, it's like you'd go to people's houses and you're just like, what is going on here? Like I was just like, where were you versus like you're from uh, New York City, right? Yeah, I was like in the Yonkers in the Bronx. Oh, wow. At the time when they got divorced, I moved to Yonkers, like really close to the Bronx. So like really close to like that line. And my dad lived in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. So um I would like go. I got like bullied because uh, I was like I would come to school in like clean clothes, and that's like that was also like apparently a problem. Or like my mom would iron my clothing. I had to like make her stop. It was like, <laughs> it was, like weird things I had to like stop doing so that like I didn't seem like too like I don't know preppy. And I like you know I already like was I was already acing the school in like the nice neighborhood, and I moved to fucking hood, and I'm like sleeping through class, and I have the high. You know what I mean? Like it's I was already like drawing too much attention to myself. Uh, so I had to like find a way to like be likable. Uh, but I got bullied by women mostly. Funny enough, which is bullied still happening. Women. I'm still bullied by women. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the, the most persecuted you. man in the mar- So Marie uh, hasn't been bullying you though. No, no, Marie is she's a good soul. Uh, she's never bullied me. She was one of my first followers. That was a woman on the internet. One she's of the first followers. She was a woman. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. Yeah, you, um, um. Tina, you, Tina, uh, a few other people like are like very clearly. We're like very early on, like a follower of mine. I was like, oh wow, 
I think all guys enough. remember their like early female followers because they're like you took a chance. Well, no, <laughs> it's a like, chance are, are you even like I didn't even know that there were girls here. Like I remember when the first girl followed me, I was like, why is this queer pretending to be a woman? And then <laughs> yes. after like after like a month, I was like, this guy really sucks at posting. And then I was like, oh, it's just a real woman. <laughs> yeah, that's a, yeah. You're, at first you think they're fake. I thought Tina was fake for sure. I thought Bimbo Ubermensch because she followed me early too. I thought she was fake. Uh, and then I was like, oh no, you're just this is this is definitely you're a chick. Um, but then you realize sometimes like my there are a few times where like my real personality comes through even when I'm joking and stuff. And then you're like, okay, fine. In real life, I'm not actually a loser, so I can see how. The girls might <laughs> assume I'm not a loser too. So um, it makes sense. Everyone has been asking me if I'm a man lately. There's been so many people in my DMs, like so many people commenting, being like, this is a man. Um, people will be <laughs> well, that's like, because of Lucas. Lucas people will be like, you. you're, you're a queen. And then people will comment, she's actually a king. So for everyone, <laughs> everyone who's unaware, uh, what went on here is Marie went viral for a bunch of stuff. I said, what the fuck? She's getting so much followers. This is fucked up. So I changed my profile picture to her profile picture. And then I started going viral too. And uh, a bunch of people got – and then I wrote a big thread about uh, – it was like thread, like how to steal a profile picture and pretend to be a woman online. And uh, – as a result now, a bunch of people are pretending to be women and a bunch of people are also extremely, extremely wary of Marie because uh, now that it's out there, they're all worried that they're going to message Marie and then Marie is going to be like, lol, like, I'm a dude, you're gay. <laughs> you're so <Yeah>. gay. <laughs> that guy wrote like a five paragraph like love letter to me and I was like, you have a horrible nose, dude. <laughs> this is- <laughs> you know My name is Lily Lucas. I didn't even I didn't even convincingly pretend to be a woman, right? Like I literally just changed my profile picture to Marie. I didn't change my name. I didn't start posting like a girl. I didn't change my <laughs> background. My pin tweet was obviously in the point of view of a man. So like it was such a low, such a low investment thing to go investigate. Is this a real girl before messaging me five paragraphs of love? And like if you fail that bar, it's kind of like you know, you like I feel like you deserve to be screenshotted and blasted at this point. Hundred percent, you totally deserve that. I don't feel bad for him at all. Sometimes you gotta just fucking flame people on the timeline, or not flame them, but just expose them on the timeline. For Marie's content. been going at it with a few of them. She went off with some. Someone was uh, talking about getting dumped or getting Aww. getting cheated on or something, and she came in and said, "Don't ever talk about this again. <laughs> this is making me embarrassed." <laughs> Yeah, no, this guy was like, you cheated on me with my girl and what like, and then you like shamed me on the timeline. And I was like, this is why it's going to happen to you again, because you're being really <laughs> cringe and embarrassing right now. You, you should out. do a thread, by the way, on uh, why if you're a man who gets cheated on, it's your fault. That's going to go. That would blow up. Yeah. No. Well, I actually 100% do believe that. I know, I do yeah, too. that's exactly why it's going to work. It's, it's, liter- it's literally true, right? Because that's it's, exactly it's, it's either work. like, one, you have failed to make the woman love you, or yeah. two, you have failed to detect that the woman is a whore. Yeah, yeah. you're, you, yeah, you have some serious problems if you're, if you're getting cheated on as a man, because I genuinely don't think girls want to cheat. Like, most girls do not want to cheat. Hmm. Interesting. Like you're, I remember like, in college, uh, I dated this like pure, purebred genetic whore. And uh, her, her mom I, was like, a whore. You know? bread, I literally, I literally, I literally GF'd like the ultimate pinnacle god tier whore who like still to this day has like multiple she has a husband right but she has like four kids with like five different guys <laughs> like oh my just, God. just like absolutely off and like the husband's still it? raising all of them but uh Can you dm me a link to the, to her facebook i really want to see her <laughs> I can send you pictures of her. She uh, she's so much of a horse girl that she started like resembling a horse over the years. Oh, hell yeah, it, I love so, that. So, I love that so much when people start to resemble things that they're like dude, spiritually aligned with. Oh my god, dude, the best. Well, the, the bad thing about her is that like whatever I did to her, like I actually like. So she like cheated on me, and then I like was like, okay, well you cheated on me, so I have to go away now. And uh, <laughs> then for every, literally every like two or three months for the next like eight years. She's messaged me being like, Lucas, 
you treated me the best any guy has ever treated me like please will you please just i understand i was bad please just give me another chance and like nothing makes you feel like more of a loser than being told by a purebred genetic whore that you are the guy who treated them the best out of everything (laughs) (laughs) like fuck man like you are the man that was dumb enough to be most thoroughly hoodwinked by me <laughs> oh fuck, so every yeah. time I see you're holding the spaghetti, man. Right, like I literally, I literally like can't respond to her because like I can't maintain like a light level of like banal banter going back and forth with her. Like I'm legitimately triggered every time I see a message from her. Like I take my phone and like throw it at the bed and I go sulk for like four hours. Like fuck. <laughs> I can't believe I got owned so bad when I was 18 years old. Hell yeah. How long did you date her for? like three months like some like totally <laughs> totally but you know back when you were 18 three months was a long time that's a long time at 18 yeah <laughs> like that's like like considering that's like a half some that's like a semester and like yeah. that seems like forever in school yeah but like now three months i don't remember the last three months they just like happened all at yeah once. everything everything <laughs> got really really fast at some point but back then i remember it being like like that was a serious relationship for me at that point it's serious learning experience yeah. Yeah, you want to write a thread on that? You should do it. That's that'll, that'll I've been bang. notes as you guys are talking. That's yeah, good. There's bang. so there's so many ways you can pivot this one too. And I yeah. also like I think I think uh, black Twitter women are gonna freaking love it because it like like you're gonna get a lot of LOL. That's so true. Like because it totally absolves women of all blame. Yes, yeah. anything that you can do to that to do that is just the uh, that's always in a bang. Women do not like to dodge accountability; it's their favorite. I love not that in this particular I case. I love though, dodging yeah. accountability personally. So yeah, who doesn't? I do too. Actually, this Literally is one everyone of my does. Most, it's just that one of my greatest and most feminine strengths is my ability <laughs> to never be accountable for everything, for anything. Like even as a kid, when my mom would be like, "Hey, Lucas, uh, can you empty the dishwasher?" I would be like, "Maybe." And then she'd be like, Lucas, you never emptied the dishwasher. And I'd be like, I never said I would, technically. <laughs> technically speaking, uh, <laughs> I like to, I like, interestingly enough, I like accountability, but I don't like being asked to do things because I feel like obligated. I'm like, maybe it's like I'm, I'm too accountable. I'm too responsible. I'm the oldest child, is the problem. I have like older brother syndrome. And it's like, okay, fine, since you asked me. I wonder uh, – oh, shit. Where was I going with this? I think Twitter misogynists are really fun for that reason because they're like – for the reason that they like take all agency away from women. For whatever reason, it just <laughs> doesn't offend me at all and I just am like, okay, great. Like they're like – or like even the incel theory people, they're like, oh, all women are like – they're really stupid, like they're below men, all of this stuff. And I'm like, Whatever. well, all this really is cope, actually. And I am okay with this cope, though. I think it actually is empowering, but it's cope to empower, right? Because it's like, if you absolve other people of any kind of accountability for anything, like if you basically, like, it's very easy to, like, I don't know. It's very easy to just be like, oh, I get no pussy or like, oh, I got cheated on or oh, whatever. But if you essentially just give no agency to the people, like, to the people, like, that you want to shit from it like makes you do things more which is why that cope started but i think now it just makes people black pilled yeah i mean it's it's just really used and especially because like people may theoretically have agency but realistically like how many people actually have the agentic ability to accomplish anything like it's so freaking low that you might as well just assume that basically nobody except you has agency and mm-hmm. then you will make things work Exactly. Like this, yeah. this when applied to like dating is sort of the same. Like if you just assume, okay, like unless I take literally all responsibility for all outcomes, something fucking horrible is going to happen to me. <laughs> and like it's yes. mostly true, right? It's mostly true. Yeah. Like that you can only you're a locus of control is all you can you have, right? Yeah. So like you, nobody nobody else it. is gonna really give a shit about treating verse well <laughs> just yeah. like on principle if there's incentive structures that compete with that. Exactly. So like you know, and this is a, this is the, but the thing is though, this is also fundamentally in, incompatible with any kind of feminism, but like women don't even really fucking believe, honestly, I've not met a, and who, unless she's like a literal lesbian, I've not met a feminist who actually believes any of it. I'm going to be honest with you guys. They like to be 
they they just don't like the um the obvious like assault part, which fair, very fair. I don't well, think I don't think assault feminism? is good either. Wait, wait, wait. What about feminism? Do they not believe? Uh, most of the ideological aspects, other than the whole like women shouldn't be assaulted, I think that one is pretty universal, obviously. But I think that all the agency stuff, I think that it's kind of like I have to say this because in practice, if you like, I've dated many feminists. I'm from New, I dated in New York City for a long time. If you take all the agency away from them, they're like happy as a fucking clam. I'll pay for everything. I'm planning. This is where we're going to go. Tell them what to do. They're like, oh, I didn't think I liked this, but you know what I mean. It's like you don't even believe it anyway. Shut up. That was that's not your like. It's not. It doesn't really like benefit you because then you're not like in your like, I don't know. It's not as like you're not in the feminine energy. Then you're like, then and then women wonder why like they don't like to do it anymore. They're like, I have to do all this shit anyway. What do I need him for? That kind of thing. Yeah. I, I think, don't know. I think it would really annoy me to hear all of the takes about how women are stupid and how they're like below men. No, it, but don't say that to them, obviously. Yeah, that's, but that's people on internet. Twitter say that. People on Twitter say that. Yeah, but you don't say that to your girl. The, the you say that to really, the internet to rant. The yeah. really, really irritating thing winds up being when you have like a 90 IQ guy talking to like a 120 IQ yes. girl and like assuming superior. Like I feel, that is annoying, I feel yeah. so, so, so bad for all of the like actually <laughs> smart girls when they have these like literal retarded people replying like endless eggshells to them. And there's like, there's not really any sort of good rhetorical response other than just like going away. Right. Because like any, it, it's not even like, they're not even like a good springboard, right? Like there's nowhere like funny rhetorically that you can go with the eggshells that hasn't been like explored already it's just like you're essentially dealing with like a crypto bot that like spams a gif about like elon dog is going to the moon yeah essentially and yeah. There, like you, you can't have like funny banter with this person so there's no say, there's no benefit to engagement but uh but i will say a lot of 120 women will be happy they should find a 90 like a nice little they need a 90 IQ man who's just very nice and pleasant because you don't need to – and then just like l- learn how to swivel his head. You know what I mean? Like Wait, you think thinks, 120 IQ women need 90 IQ men? Yes, yes. They need to like really find a do? dude. Yes, yeah, so here's I, why. Here's I why. Think no. gonna, I think we're going to diverge on this one. this one. No, this is great. You need a guy who's just like kind of buff but very sweet. And then you just need to find a, a woman who is capable of just like swiveling his head, right? He can be – you let him think he's the head of the house and she'll just be like the neck and just like move him wherever she wants. It's this like is like such a his boomer. Energy. This is such a boomer take. For- is it a boomer take? Yeah. I think it works, honestly. I think people need to stop like – because everyone wants to fucking compete with someone. I'm like a then- strict believer in like – IQ Absolutely pairing. no That's cast pairing. mixing. Uh, you know, we, uh, yeah, I guess so, maybe. But I think that like uh, there's not, there's fundamentally just not enough people with a high enough IQ if you get to that level of intelligence as a woman, like because women like to also date smarter guys than them. But there's just not enough, frankly. And so, well, isn't this the whole thing with the male versus female IQ distribution, where like the male curve is flatter, so there's like. There's proportion at any at any given IQ point above 100. There's more men than there are women, and as you go towards like three, four standard deviations, there's basically no women there, but there's still men. That's oh, that's true, yeah. But the but also, I feel like there's not enough like attractive like the IQ is fine, but there's not enough attractive IQ men with the higher IQ, right? You got to like start dating the twinks and shit. You know what I mean? Like because there's also like this weird like social signaling from men. Who decide that oh I'm intelligent so I can't have any kind of masculine trait because I have to counter signal that. Those are yeah. funny also. Yeah, and there's a lot of those dudes, and so I can I can't I understand why women are just like it's fucking sucks. I'd be annoyed too. You got to date fucking like a, a English grad students who like write poetry and like try to manipulate you. That's just, it's really is that, that sounds up miserable. I feel bad for intelligent women. Yeah, me too. I do generally date intelligent women, though, so they get the honor of dating me. So go them. But I don't know. I just can't imagine, like, I just feel like the the options of who you get, or you get to date, like, the smug asshole. It's very, it's not that many, it's not that common um, for, like, a socially intelligent, smart person. It's usually, like, some smug dickhead because of some, like, weird, like, uh, make the whole personality being intelligent. You know what I mean? I'm trying to think of couples I know that I like where the girl is substantially smarter than the guy. 
Oh, I don't uh, know that many people, any examples of this. I, I just think it would be a good, I, think, I just think it might work. I've never seen this work. In, I never, other than my aunt, I think actually, no, my aunt and her husband, she's definitely smarter than him by a lot. Actually, my aunt's very intelligent and he's definitely not, but he's like jacked. He's like 50 and fucking shredded. And he's like a police officer. And she's like, uh, psych, she's like works uh, therapist essentially. And they have a great time. And then, you know. How long, just, have and, they, how long have they been together? Over a decade. They've been oh, married okay. at least. So yeah, they've been, maybe years. 12 years. Yeah. And they have a great time. They love it. She gets to have her like super buff macho boyfriend. And and he likes that he has like, you know, her intelligent wife. And then they, they have like different domains. They get to argue all the time. They love arguing. It's great. What does who wins the arguments? Um, he's just more stubborn than her. <laughs> so okay. he ends up winning, which kind of also like reifies the whole thing. It's like that's he's really just like funny. so fucking just like assertive. He's like, This is I, this is the ending. Like, but he's also like, Let's he doesn't like control her from doing shit. He's like, Yeah, have your opinions. I don't really care. You're a woman. <laughs> like, yeah, you know what I mean? So it's like, and he's like, again, traditionally masculine. He's a cop. He has like, you know, he protects the house. It, it's, a, it's a good balance. So I have, so most of my friends from college are married. Mm-hmm. And one of my two of my friends are married to guys who are substantially less intelligent than they are. Um, and one of the marriages is really good, and one of the marriages is really bad, and neither of the marriages I would want to be in. Interesting. <laughs> Even the good one? Why not the good one? Well, the good one is good because I guess she loves him and she likes him, but like that he it would annoy me just in like, terms of like if you were to replace yourself in her yeah, role in the marriage you wanted to kill yourself if i was the person in the relationship yeah okay that's fair i mean i guess women are they do have a whole thing about like personality i guess they don't really they don't want to fucking <laughs> talk you to them not at first you have to have I, a, I, more of a good no I, in, I mean like, yeah i guess i do because like if no one's ever said like any girl i've dated is like there's no one's been like, oh, you've dated this idiot who has a bad personality. They might say she's a bitch or something because I like I've dated like ice queens or whatever. But like they've never, no one's ever been like this girl's dumb or boring. Those are like two statements no one's ever said. Um, but I, I just don't see why what the having a dude being like particularly charismatic, other than the fact that girls like that, really helps. You know what I'm saying? It helps smooth over social situations for you. In like in like a relationship, like in in a interpersonal. Yeah, like the argument. girls sort of get umbrellaed if the guy has enough charisma. Yeah, like if you're out and about in like public together, then he can like smooth everything over for you. Instead of you, like if I'm by myself, things go smooth for me. But if I have mm-hmm. like some, if I I've had boyfriends who are not as well socialized and that is like a weight around my neck oh interesting i mean because i have friends who are really well who are really well socialized and then that like that makes it it boosts it like everything goes super easily it's just like a thing of uh i mean it it just winds up permeating basically every interaction that you have with everybody when people like your boyfriend and respect your boyfriend more girls Mm -hmm. wind up getting swept up and everything and when they think he's like a sort of loser you get like you know, it's like, why? What's she with this guy for? Like, what? So every girl has told me some variety, some variation of this, but I obviously can't experience not having social skills. So I'm always like, what the fuck? Yeah. So I, they're like, wow, because my last boyfriend was like a, especially like my long time girlfriend. Her last boyfriend was like actually a friend of mine, but he was like a dickhead, like Ivy League programmer type of dude, and he just was kind of a pretentious and like short with patience, and so. She'd always say, like, there's always, like, conflict that happens. But I was like, yeah, but that dude is a dickhead, so, like, I get it. But you, I guess it makes sense if you're, like, in general, this is, like, the baseline is just there's always a conflict. I can see how that's annoying. The easiest example is, like, uh, I don't know. I've had girls who I've dated where, like, they were worried, oh, my God, like, I can't introduce you to my parents. Like, this, I did that with my last boyfriends. Everything went so badly. Like, I can't oh, yeah. do X or Y. Like, I can't bring you around my friends. And then, like, they finally do it. And they're like, oh, everything went fine. Like, I just, I guess I just have PTSD because the last time I did this, he, like, spurred out and acted like a freak. Oh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Because, like, no one ever has been like, they can't bring me places. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess having enough charisma does help. I was thinking you were saying more so like if 
she finds you charismatic, then if you're failing in like an emotional aspect with your act, like in your actual relationship, then oh, no. yeah. it's just a nice, it's a nice quality of life thing too. Like quality where life. if, if guys like and respect him, then they will go out of their way to like do favors to help the girl. True. Like if she, this is true. Yeah. If she, if she needs like her car breaks down or something, or she needs some sort of help with like a work thing. Yeah. It's yeah, like a more, true. it's not as much as like, it's like the island thing, like, oh, this relationship would be perfect perfect if it was just like you and me on an island. The char- the charisma thing is not about your relationship, your interpersonal relationship. It's about like the way that your in relationship interacts with the world. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Um I guess yeah, that's very important, yeah. Because like, you're really dumb and have good like you, I don't know, it's kind of crazy like thinking about marriage and like relationship re- relationships and stuff as like you can think of it as like a business partnership because it kind of is like you're intertwining like your entire this life. This is so pragmatic. I love this. You're intertwining mm-hmm. your life. You're intertwining your your PR, your um, your resources, your human your resources. resources. Yeah. You're intertwining your finance team. <laughs> so um, I did actually do a business for my girlfriend. I don't recommend doing that, by the way. Just future reference. Uh, this is when I was in my the tail end of my feminism. So I was like, oh yeah. But anyway. Uh, yeah, no, it, is, it does make sense. You need to have someone who you can easily uh, navigate the social world with. Yeah. And having someone, but again, I, I, I've never, since I have social skills, it's hard to con- understand what it'd be like to not. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's easy to watch. Like I'll, it's easy to watch, you know, yeah. like I have enough, I have enough female friends that when I like hear them talk about their relationships or I see what's going on in their lives, like it becomes very clear the difference between them having a good boyfriend or them having a bad boyfriend. Mm -hmm. But also this is why girls get mad at me because they can see I have social skills and I still do things to fuck it up. Like, but this is more like platonic friends in group chat. It's less so like, (laughs) less so like girl or like girls at parties, not girls I'm actually dating. They all seem to be like, whatever, but I can call it. You really do trigger girls in group chat. I trigger girls like every, like in every group chat. (laughs) And it's not even like me. I don't have to even attack them. I'm a walking neg. They don't like me. It's, they like it's me, but the constant dating uh, dialogue and discourse. But I don't even do dating discourse. I just make like I just take whatever everyone else says and I just make it. I guess more annoying. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. This is, well, this is something really funny that I've started doing. Is every now and then I'll come in and I'll give the exact same take as verse, but I will word it slightly differently. And someone, every goes, girl oh, agrees yeah. with oh, you. Oh, oh yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> I swear to God, I've never seen anything like it. He says it like word for word. I'm like, how the fuck did that? What's going on? And then they're like, I just fucking I versus take was awful. And I'm sitting there like, oh yeah, yeah, like it's understandable. These are totally different takes, but I'm thinking like it's the same thing. You've yeah, been, you've been verbally hoodwinked. Uh, yeah, it's it's. I definitely have a um, abrasive way of speaking. Clearly. I don't think so. I don't know. Maybe I just... Well, because you're not insane. Because you have a sense of humor. You have to have a sense of humor or, or you're also normal. Yeah. I think he has a sense of... Uh, there's definitely like a sort of male-brained autism that you don't get with a lot of girls. <laughs> yeah. I think there's like uh, girls who are either male-brained or girls who are like just very like, I don't know, like competent socially don't tend to get triggered by me at all. It's like everyone... It's all the other ones. It's like the ones who were like nerdy in school. And then, like, had, like, a glow up or something. I don't know. It's like, it's like, (laughs) or like, it's just like girls who, like, were not uh, invited to parties in high school. Those girls get triggered by me. I don't know what it is about you that's triggering them because I I can get triggered for sure. There are people who really do trigger me, but you're just not one of them. I don't really say anything that offensive, though. Mm -hmm. If you look at the actual content of my statements, they're not offensive per se. Right. It's, well, it, I mean, most of the girls have basically homing missile to you. Like they're yeah, they yeah. are like aggroed to you, and what you say is just like a vehicle by which to demonstrate their aggro towards you. Yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. I just and can't in fairness, know why it is? I really can't. Marie's always been funny in the sense that, like, uh, you remember in the first group chat we were in, you would always message me being like, "Why are they all fucking ignoring you when you're saying way worse stuff than every other guy in there?" And they're all totally fine with you and they're attacking every single other guy. It, it was crazy because I was see, like you would say things and then 
it would like a girl would get mad and then she would attack someone else violently, like violently <laughs> attack someone else who didn't even say that much after you had just said something terrible. Like, and it was almost like they were trying to attack you, but they had to attack someone else. Like it was <laughs> They're like, I like him, so I can't attack him, but you're going to get the someone has to like confront scared. this anger. Yeah. Uh, now it's weird because I do have that skill too. Like, they'll let me slide with some things that like it's more when i'm in the in the overton window of like an acceptable take but i'm on the edges of it then they get really really mad yeah. but if i say something outlandish everyone's like oh verse oh verse you could say that right like i've had people like repeat like for example i can say i've been allowed in any group chat to just call women bitches and no one says anything like i i now i do it more just to see when someone's gonna say something but no one ever comments about that. It's like my actual choice of language. No one ever really comments on. But like if I and if I say something like particularly like just over the top racist or sexist, no one says anything. But it's when it's within like normal discourse and it's like slightly it could be slightly interpreted as not OK, then they all lose it. Mm-hmm. And it's usually when that happens, I don't even realize I'm, I set a take. It's that, that, I usually say those takes when I'm like not making a joke, like I'm not fucking with anyone. I'm just mm-hmm. like, oh well, but da da da. And then I like go go to like get a drink from the fridge and come back and fucking everything exploded. I'm like, what's going on? So yeah. I don't know. I think that just like you just can't argue. I don't know, like the the arguing, it doesn't usually get anywhere. That's the but that's the thing. That's what gets. That's why they're aggro. This is my total victory. (laughs) This is why they're aggro. Everyone knows that if you lapse into an argument with Lucas, it's sort of like uh, you're wearing like the dunce cap, right? Yes. And whereas with me, I'll entertain an argument more than I should. I feel like Lucas will just go nuclear right away on the argument, and like there's not he's not gonna like he's not gonna fiddle around. He'll just go nuclear. I just I, – I don't I, even – when when have you seen me go nuclear? I do subtle, passive-aggressive feminine – But it's still nuclear. When I, when I want people to go away. But it is still nuclear. It is like, I don't well, this even, is – but maybe it's because it's – A lot of group chats myself. Like if I actually dislike you, I just ignore you and make everybody else passively hate you by DMing them until one of them gets pissed off and kicks you. But you know, maybe this is why. Because it's a feminine mode of, commun- of uh, aggression and so they, maybe they understand it. So they go, well, okay – I can interact with Lucas even if he says something insane because I also understand when he like gets mad with there's me. A of, there's a lot of the girl stuff too that guys don't understand in group chats when like uh, like girls will do their like subtle negs towards each other where they yeah. respond in a way that uh, – like little subtle one-upsmanship or little slights against each other that yes. guys don't notice and they think, they never oh, these it. girls are friends or stuff like that. And then you're sitting there watching this like lapping up all the like extreme uh, – Oh yeah, they never fucking notice that, and that's. I think that's. This is where I get aggro because where I I become aggro to them is because they know I know what's going on, and I don't do it, and I and I'll I'll like call it out, and they don't like that because like I got really in trouble the other day for like mentioning that like they're all shit talking each other to me in their DMs, which they all are, right? Which like chat is this? uh, The one we're talking about right now is Rune Chat, but um, can you guys let me into Rune Rune Chat? Actually, Actually, probably we could probably yeah, we make could. a very good case for you being added to Rune Chat. Yeah, now. and like, and Yuri knows you, so we can definitely add you. And you have clout now. Yeah, you're definitely getting added. And you have clout now. <laughs> <laughs> you so, sorry, yeah. There's a 30k uh, follower, sort of like an entry <laughs> limit. Is it a good? Is it a good chat? Yeah, it's an active chat. Yeah, there's always something happening. Okay, can I tell you guys something? The craziest thing happened when I became clouded a bunch of Muslim teenagers started adding me to their chats. I got added to like four Muslim chats, like with Muslim teenagers. And the craziest thing Mm. about it is that they have the exact same vibes as all of the Catholic chats that I've ever been in. What? Like Mm. exact same vibes, like very sexually repressed, very ADHD, like low, very low grade mean humor. Guys asking to marry girls before they know them, not because they really want to marry them, but just because they're horny and they're like too purity spiralish to say. Right, and them saying like, "I want to marry you" is equivalently like, "I want to have sex with you," but I can't say that, so I'm saying it through this other vehicle. Yes. Um, mm. It's like it's the strangest thing, and I had no idea that Muslim Twitter was so 
like had What's all these happening? Chats. It, it's happening yeah there's this, like this sort of like fits in with my assumption that basically all religion at this point in america sort of boils into the same form of psychology like it's all the same mm-hmm. people doing it regardless of what you pick mm-hmm. also the lefties i think are very similar to the really religious people too oh of course yeah they're the exact like it's the extreme exactly lefty same. is like the, no, it's literally Protestantism. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like they they do they've like recreated all of the same like right religious rights, but now with like black people and shit and, and like trans. It's like the exact same thing now. Very strange. Yeah, it is really strange. They um, it's from the same like genetic people. You know what I mean? Like the same like oh true yeah the people who came over here on the Mayflower are the same people who are like either super Protestant now or super left-leaning like blm warriors that is a good point actually it is the same it's from the same well yeah genetic well Hmm. Hmm. hey marie do you know about uh the incel wiki no i don't (laughs) so there's this really yeah yeah yeah. no it has it has no i'm saying that she doesn't know about it it's nice Oh, okay. So there's this wiki that has a collection of basically all of these incel theory. Like it, it's where you go if you want to become like an incel theory cell. Yeah, I and learn need, about like all I of their. I need this uh, for inspiration. I was gonna say you should 100% go browse this place, and uh, <laughs> like like they have articles on like the pink pill, which is essentially like being so black pilled out of being a beta male that you transition because that's the only way you'll ever find love. Theory, hypergamy, scientific black pill, marriage, feminism, beauty, behavioral sync, Chad, dark triad, slut. But yeah. <laughs> your brain is your brain just like smiling right now. This is all perfect stuff to make threads on. Physiognomy, Fisherian runaway. Well, I don't know what that one is. Wait, what is that? Fisherian runaway is a model of how sexual selection can lead to exaggerated physical or behavioral traits. And oh, okay, yeah, yeah. It's like case selection versus our our selection and contribute to extinction. Yeah. Okay. R versus K selection. I love. I love the. I. I love the. The incel wiki. It's actually. Pretty, it's pretty good. It's some good shit in there. What is this? <laughs> uh, dark tried slut. I'm just gonna click on slut. There's oh, so much, gets, yeah. There's so much good stuff. There's in so there. much good shit in there. There's like. Uh, I love the the physiognomy threads and the, uh, t- the theory is, is just my favorite stuff on all the you know on your chins and the and the the candle tilts and all that stuff. Yeah, are you aware of the uh, like the looks maxing communities? Me? Yeah. No. So the basic idea is uh, it, it stems from like part of the whole incel theory thing where they're like, uh, you, as, as a male, you either have it or you don't have it. If you're ugly, uh, you're you're just fucked. And so they have they have very accurately described what makes faces beautiful. And so they can go and they can like if, if you post the picture, a picture of like an average guy's face, they can say like, oh, he needs like a Lafort three. We need to do some sort of like a, a chin implant, like a genioplasty. Uh, he needs like this haircut. And they like they can outline the specific modifications to his facial defects that will result in him being beautiful. And uh, it leads to them all having developed like an obsession with like plastic surgery and stuff like that. And uh, it, it's very like... They're very like fatalistic about it te- generally. Like their tendency is more like your personality doesn't matter uh, as a man. Like it's literally all about the face. And if you don't have this, it's over. But again, like that that level of focus on all of that stuff means that they're essentially like outpacing plastic surgeons in terms of their knowledge of like how to make men look good. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it seems like this kind of information is really um... – can be really dangerous for men, especially because they're going to get like a lot of men will get even more like analytical about it than women and like obsessive about it than women will. Yeah. Like women have an ability to obsess over their appearances, but they don't have an ability to obsess over like their facial width to height ratio or like the specific degree of inclination of their uh, like mid face or something like that. Yeah. I'm, this is, I have a mirror right in front of me right now. And I'm I'm so Glad I'm like a. I'm shocked that you've not that you're not like online enough to have experienced this. But b. I'm glad that 
you were getting in now that you're clouded? Yeah. This is, a, this is a great well to dig, to pull from. Well, yeah. the interesting thing is that I just like all these things that people have been know, like have known on the internet for years. I know them now, like all these things, like I've heard of them, but they're just filtered through the Twitter timeline. Oh yeah. You've never been to like the, the source. No, I've never been to the source of any of this stuff. And I've actually, tr- some of it, I've tried to find it. Like some of the physiognomy stuff I've tried to find because I'm interested in it, especially like cultural physiognomy, like the way people look in different countries. I find that interesting. And like, I think that I have a really interesting looking, like Europeanish looking face. And so like, I think people in my family do too. So I like find that interesting, but I haven't been able to look, I haven't oh, yeah, been able that's to been... find information on it. Oh, no, that stuff has been uh, lost to the annals of time. You need to find old Hakan pieces. Like, everyone's, like, for physiognomy, for, like, racial stuff, mm-hmm. they're all, like, going back to, like, they're, like, remembering Hakan tweets that are, like, Wasn't dead. Hakan literally, like, a PhD, like, a, a yeah, professor yeah. at a university or something for, him like, some sort of, like, both. race studies? Yeah, him and Bath, are, him and Bath were, like, both uh, professors, but, like, we don't know exactly which professor he was. He was saying something about his account was, like, pretending to be, like, a Native American one. But there's people, some people think he's like this black dude. So I don't know. He's like definitely was an actual like a uh, professor of like. I'm either. reading Hakan tweets. I'm on like the Hakan, like some weird Hakan the archive? website. The archive, yeah. And there's like a tribute to him and it's like rip 2015, 2019. The band- you know who made that? That was, Charlie made that. Charlie made this? Yeah. He made Hakan, this black. The, yeah, yeah, the Hakan, yeah, this Hakan looks archive. Like just yeah. something that he would do. This looks like his art. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I remember because uh, I submitted a few of them. Basically, we all submitted tweets, like screenshots we had during the pandemic, and he made the archive. Oh, my gosh. Kakan was legendary, man. He was legendary. Rip, rip I've never home. even heard of this person. Good, because you're you're a well-adjusted <laughs> human being. You should not know who he is at all. We know him because we're all online, but... You got yeah. you came online after your your frontal lobe developed, which is probably for the best. Yeah, Pecan I was a really weird poster to think of in terms of like uh, like ban evasion and stuff because he never like you know like if you word racism in a scientific enough way, like you're not necessarily insulting them for being a certain thing. You're insulting them because of like their canthal tilt or like their yeah. uh, like the slope of their forehead or something. Then it's like, yes. is this going to hit on the band report or is this not? Now he was and always he, too far ahead of the of like band words. Like um, he was using race like racial slurs that for words that people never heard of. Like he was he's the one yeah. who started the whole like um, what was it? Uh, high like he's like started the high like thing, um, about head shape. Like he was using like r- like race science uh like words like three years before anyone even heard of them. So. Yeah, like he was, he was literally too like far a ahead, pioneer yeah. of esoteric racism, Marie. Yeah, and he also was like calling people races that are like he would he was doing hyper racism, right? So he's doing like right, races he was going that like, like so, so specifically down like yes. a genetic lineage that he was able to like identify like I mean, and this is where like all the like R one B posting came from. Yeah, like when people want to talk about which which grouping they're from and stuff like that. Like this is all uh, like watered down like a con meme type stuff. Yeah, because people just – he's just like, I didn't even know I was part of this, like, uh, you know, uh, what's it called? Genetic clave? What is it? Yeah, to my Yeah, I don't – like, I – It was I too, it was I too dense for me to care. I and emit con stuff. It never stuck in my mind at all. Well, now, the only person who did was Sonny, which is, which is kind of what got him some online clout was because he was – him and um, obviously Charlie were the closest to, like, doing it. I saw, uh, I don't know, I, I just saw a bunch of like six reply quote tweet threads from him. The The thing though that I've been thinking a lot about recently is like with everyone, uh, it seems like everybody has kind of settled into like, maybe we should not get banned all the time. Hell like yeah. No, we're, this is Griff that. Meta. We're in the yeah, that was, this was always so strange when you'd have people who were like, I'm going to throw away because it is like it's not like it's super hard to make a new account, but just the process of going and following hundreds of people over multiple days, getting re-added to group chats, like all of this shit on reboot, like it is a pain in the ass. 
And the idea that like you're going to have to do this because you just wanted to post the N word on the timeline is kind of like silly to me, right? Like it is really dumb. It's like yeah. wow, like that that was an epic like 26 like tweet king. Like you got four <laughs> retweets from the guys in your group chats, and everyone was like, well, "You totally owned that black person, man!" But now you have like four hours of work as penance from it. And it's just like, <laughs> was this really like worth it? And you wind up getting like so turbo IP banned. Like I have a friend who literally like cannot use any variation of his name anymore or else it gets auto banned and like he can't use any any of his oh, really? old like profile pictures to show anyone who uh, like who his old accounts were. So he literally just uses like the color red. Like he, he downloads he, – he Google searches like red color and like takes takes Damn. like a pure red photo and like puts it in his – uh, this is like a, this is like Jugs, Jugs, Jugs department. He can't come back. I mean, he didn't even do anything to get really banned, but for some weird reason, they were like really strict with his ban. And he's like basically IP banned. He he comes back with new um, new accounts and his account's gone within a day. It's, it's very, very. Uh, it is all really, really weird because you have like, I don't, I like, I never know how the bans go with this stuff because you have people like, like BAP was super, super fucking careful with what he said. Yeah. And they got him. And then you have like zero HP who by all means appears to be like if I if I think about like in terms of infractions of what I would and like zero is really careful too. But in terms of like being closer to like the limits of Twitter, I would assume that he's way worse. But like I also assume that once you get to accounts that size of that level, like it's not necessarily just a thing of like uh, is this person – is this person breaking some algorithmic rule, right? Like it's probably more likely to be based on like a specific like Indian supervisor or someone yes. like higher up who makes a call. I think though when you get to a certain account size, you get you probably get reported every single day. And even if yeah, you Yeah, I was anything. thinking this too, especially in like when – So you have to I'm, like go way past your normal like baseline reporting numbers probably. Yeah. Or – whatever or like draw the attention of like again like a supervisor like you said so i was thinking like every single person who i like reply banter with there's always like tons of people who are getting like upset by whatever silly thing i'm saying yeah i think and I, there's no way i've not been reported and so i imagine once there's, once you get like maybe 5k 10k you're probably getting reported at a baseline level and unless you like spike past it with like a two sigma three sigma situation they probably ignore it, I guess. Someone um, so someone reported me for saying, like, I responded to a friend that, like, she did something in 2012, and I responded that I was going to punch her in the face, and I got banned on my account briefly on Monday for that. Wait, yeah. seriously? Yeah. Yeah. They made me delete a tweet from 2012. Threat, on- threat sort of yeah, physical I mean- violence, right? Yeah. Yeah, you gotta. But they mean, you, had, you, you simply had way didn't... too many eyes on your profile, and like, there's there's a combination of people who were like legitimately pissed off at what you were writing, but then there's also like just massive amounts of people who uh, get jealous whenever people get, especially like there's so many people who uh, I know like look at accounts of girls, and when they get a ton of followers, and they see the people following them are all of the guys who they've been trying to reply guy and get followbacks from, they're like, I want to fucking kill this girl. I hate this girl. Why are why are all of my future friends like following her and not me? Yeah, I guess that's how people think. It's weird. They definitely do think that way. It's it's really, they're like well adjusted. I know that that's people, what you're missing. I know that people think that way. I obviously know that people think that way because I can make a thread on it. It's just like continuously shocking that it's actually real. Yeah. Now that you've you've entered the, uh, like, it's the just mythical so land of me. I would oh. never like anyone on the internet like I, there there would never be a shred of desire in my mind to just want to ban a random person no matter how much I hated them. Like, uh, it's it's a little shade and Freud, Sh- shade and Freud, whatever. Like it's just like so much hateful energy. I don't know. Have you guys ever tried to ban anyone? No. Um, it's just the sort of thing where like anytime there's a person who. No. Uh, you get mad at like all, all of the people who have been like this is a dumb account or like you know you remember when bruce got banned because that that like four follower person like reported him for saying gimp yeah and it was a situation where there were people in a group chat saying let's go report him back and get if he took bruce's account down at least we can get his down like he said a bunch of slurs and stuff and it's like who cares this person has a four follower account they have never posted anything of worth in their entire life 
you're going to report their account. They'll come back. They'll have another four follower account for the next four years posting absolute garbage. You will have wasted your time and nothing will be different about their life. You know, like mm-hmm. it's just there's there's nothing that actually functionally happens to them. It's in this it's a situation where you have like a, an unemployed loser doxing like a white collar professional or something. And there's just like you can't have any retribution because you can dox the unemployed loser back. And like, what are they going to do? Like get fired by their mom? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of people who have a lot of time on their hands on Twitter. And it, like, you can just tell that they are investing their energy into really weird and bad places. Like, if Oh, yeah. You, you can definitely feel when you get like a totally mentally unstable yeah, person. Yeah. You can feel when someone is just like – maybe they have even like intelligence – or a measure of talent in some way, and they're just like completely misusing it on someone who does not give a shit about what they what they think at all. Me, yeah, you should. You're definitely going to get a lot of this. Where like you get a reply or a uh, a quote tweet from someone in your notifications, and like there's there's like a pull. Like you feel like some sort of like manifestation attraction to their comment when you realize like this has like juicy potential. Like this person is uh, – they can be milked for good content mm-hmm. <laughs> and you have to follow it and go towards it. Yeah, I've definitely done that. I've definitely been doing that since I went viral. Yeah, you've – welcome to the uh, the grift. The, yeah, I, I uh, have perpetual been. grift. And also like so I briefly was – 